Hi everyone. A question that I am asked quite a lot um, is how how can we grow more spiritually? So I'm going to give you maybe three little things for you to become aware of. Um, and I think maybe a lot of you are aware of them already, but maybe not in maybe not in this way. So the first one is prayer. And prayer helps us to grow spiritually. It helps us to allow our souls to come forward. It helps us to dig into ourselves. And it doesn't matter what way you pray. Whether I often say to people, whether you stand on your head or whether you dance or whether you are sitting somewhere and you close your eyes for a few minutes or whether you recite a prayer. Because the most important thing is when you pray is to become conscious yourself. Just say to yourself, before I start to pray, I want to be really aware of my spiritual self. And you're talking about your soul. You want to become more connected to your soul. You want to become more connected to your guardian angel. So when you go into prayer, just allow your mind to be so conscious of that, that your whole body becomes, what would I say, changes. You feel the change because in prayer, you help to move your soul. You help to make that spiritual connection stronger. It's like every time you say a word, I often say the prayer of um, the Archangel Michael, those words that God had given. And another prayer I would always say as well is a prayer um, to follow God. And I would say, God, I adore you. I love you. Have your angels each side of me, in front of me and behind me. Guide me. So I follow you, God, with goodness and love in my heart all the time. Your radiant light shining down upon me. I love you and I, I love you and adore you, my God. Amen. And I think when you say the words of a prayer, don't even say it that quick. It's like, even when you say the word I, it's like to hesitate on the word I, is to focus on that word in your prayer. And then when you say the next word, which is in that prayer I've just said, adore, it's to make that spiritual connection with each word you utter. And I know sometimes we say a prayer and we rhyme it off so quick. And God hears that prayer and the angels of prayer bring that prayer straight to heaven, you know, and they even make that prayer more, what would you call it? They empower that prayer more. But this is not about the angels bringing your prayer to heaven. This is not about your prayer just going to God because it does automatically, no matter what way you say it. But it's about you personally making the spiritual connection to yourself, to your soul, to your guardian angel. And of course, always ask your guardian angel to come in and join you, to help you to pray. That is very important as well. And I, I know if you practice, and lots of people will say to me, um, well, they don't have time to practice. And I smile at that because God has me praying all the time. I just do it. And 
I, I could be washing the dishes, as I would say, at the sink, or I could be out walking, um, or I could be doing the gardening. I could literally be doing anything. And even here, talking to you, I'm praying as well. I'm so conscious of my soul in prayer. And I'd love you to get to that stage. And again, it's it's practice. It's I always say to people, you know, it just doesn't come. It'll come quicker to some and slower to others. But it's like a baby, you know, learning how to walk, to stand up. Some babies do it quicker than others. Some are a bit slower. But don't worry if you're a bit slower because maybe the person who's doing quicker, um, how would I say this, is just going to a certain depth and maybe the person who's actually doing it slower, um, who's taking more time, is going deeper. Because we all go, we all connect spiritually to ourselves, to our soul, to our guardian angel, to God to the universe, to, to nature, to this earth, to literally everything as different levels in one way. But yet, spiritually, in prayer, we're all equal. And that's another thing for, for you to remember. So I would love you to, to pray, even once a day, to say to yourself, once a day, I'm going to give myself one minute to say a little prayer and to focus on it and to connect with my soul and my guardian angel, connect with the other part of me. And I know I could talk loads about and I could tell you so many other different ways that you could practice to do it. But I think now I will just go and help you even to connect with your guardian angel because I love the way um, I have to smile, but, you know, I smile at this because God is using his guardian angels and using all of the angels, your guardian angel, my guardian angel, everyone's guardian angel, and all the archangels and every single angel out there to bring us back, to bring us back to our faith to our beliefs, you know, to, to that purity, you know, that goodness. And one way to help with that connection is, and I know I've said this many times, is in the morning when you wake, say good morning to your guardian angel, or even when you're having a stretch, you know, but say hello to your soul as well, because this is another step of growing spiritually is helping you all to become conscious of your soul because your soul is very important to you it's the other it's the other you it's the part of you that you often say who am i i want to get to know myself you're talking about your soul so much of the time and of course then there's the human part of us and the human part of us we know more of. But then there's our guardian angel and we want to feel more connected to our guardian angel as well. So in the mornings, do that. And many a time I've told people, you could write a letter to your guardian angel. You can give out to your guardian angel, you know. Um, but ask your guardian angel to help you to be connected to your soul. Tell your guardian angel that you want to grow more spiritually so that you will be in harmony, you know, with everything around you, with your life. And that's very important. It's important for you. And I know I could go on and maybe answer more questions on the guardian angel, but remember your guardian angel is your guardian angel and can never, ever be anyone else's, ever. It's yours for eternity. And you knew your guardian angel. You spoke with your guardian angel. You even embraced your guardian angel um, before you were conceived, before you were born. 
um, I know in a human way you would have laughed with your guardian angel. You would have talked about all the ups and downs that are there that will be in your life. And at that time, you knew your guardian angel would always be with us. But when you were born, you kind of, I suppose, at birth and all that, you knew when you were born, but the world, the human part of you, kind of cut that connection off. You know, because so many, for so many generations, we have been taught to, what would you say, only what's real, what you can see and touch and feel is real. Anything else isn't. But that's where we know we're wrong. We know we have a soul and we know we have a guardian angel. We know that now. And we know that our guardian angel loves us unconditionally. No matter how good we are or how bad we are at times, maybe, you know, that our guardian angel never judges us and loves us unconditionally and never leaves us for one second. So you're never, never alone. And just every morning, say good morning. You know, even ask your guardian angel for a sign as well, something simple. Um, but to know it's there, I think that's a huge step to give yourself a chance to believe. What have you got to lose? And the other thing I would say, the third thing I would say would be, you know, the word the angels gave me was to become calm. To become calm and still within ourselves. That's another step of growing spiritually. That's another step of connecting spiritually to ourselves and to everything around us. And I think that's a practice that we don't do enough. People don't give themselves that space or that time. We allow our mind to be flooded with all the human ups and downs. And we shouldn't be blocking those human ups and downs. We should block them and we shouldn't block them, but it's like we need to take time out for ourselves to give us that calmness, that stillness. It's like, um, I always remember the angels teaching me, Archangel Michael teaching me how to receive that calmness, that stillness. And he would have me sometimes sit at a stream um, sometimes on a stone or on a bank um, and take my shoes and socks off and he'd have me put my feet into the water and close my eyes and he would say just now connect to the flow of the water and allow yourself to become calm and still and I loved doing that as a child um, even as a teenager and even as an adult, I do it on odd occasions when nobody is around. Um, but it would fill you with that. You, you, it would fill you with that calmness, that stillness. It's like when I would do it, as Archangel Michael said, become connected spiritually. And in a sense, it would be like the water was flowing up through my feet, going up and flowing down ever so gently. And it would clear my mind, all the human thoughts of all the things I would be worried about or concerned about would be washed away. And today we can't, um, well, a lot of us can't go to a river or a stream and put our feet in the water. But you could practice at home. You know, you could do it for a minute or two, um, a basin of water. Nobody doesn't even have to know. You could say you're just soaking your feet. 
and I have to smile because that's something I do love to do. And now, you know, I know where I got that from and that was from Archangel Michael teaching me as a child to put my feet into the stream. So this is all about growing spiritually, becoming calm within yourself, allowing your soul to come forward, allowing your spirituality within you for you to grow, to get to know you more that other part of you. And you can do this in three ways. And I know there's many other ways, but I'm just giving you these three now. And that is through prayer. And the second one is, you know, saying hello to your guardian angel and hello to your soul and becoming connected in that way. You know, being so conscious of it. And then the third is becoming calm and still, connected to the whole universe again. That's what these three things do. They connect us spiritually and humanly to the whole universe because God has created the whole universe and it's beyond our comprehension, but it's there for us. So I would love everyone to grow more spiritually, everyone to hear their guardian angel clearly, everyone to be filled with more happiness and more joy, everyone to be united in peace and love, regardless of our differences, because we need to leave our differences behind and just have love there. So I'm going to finish just now because I think I have said enough and I hope my voice has been strong enough. So I'm just going to say God bless and love you all and goodbye for now. Hello everyone. I would love to talk today about, or a little about anyway, of our futures, the future of mankind and the future of our planet. And I know at the moment, many of us think that we don't have a future. Many of us think that, you know, everything is coming to an end. But I'd have to say to you, no. Even though we're going through a hard time now, we have many incredible futures. And I have been shown many of them. And I have been shown some of the the negative ones as well, but I have always been shown that with the negative ones, we actually get through them because we are evolving all of the time. And there's enough of us as we move forward in evolution that are in a sense more evolved than others. Um, and the way I explain that is because the other side, as one would say, the dark side or, or the wicked side or, or the wrongdoings or that of want of greed, that is the other side. And it's always, what would you say, stepping in the way from blocking us from making the right decisions we need to make every single day, whether it is, you know, going out for a walk or not, you know, whether it is studying for an exam or whether it is making a business decision, but making it correctly. We have many, many choices and we don't have to listen to the negative side. We don't have to listen to that side that tells us, you know, to be selfish or greedy because we need to let out for the future of humanity more love. We need to grow more spiritually. We need 
to be more conscious of our soul, more conscious that we are not just a human being, we're a spiritual being. We are that light that dwells within us. And not just within us, but how would I say, out there as well. That powerful light, our soul. And for humanity, we need that for the future to start to intertwine with our human selves. And that's one huge difference I'm seeing in mankind nowadays. We are trying to connect spiritually. We are in, in search of spirituality, of connecting to our soul, connecting to our guardian angel, even connecting to those that have died and gone ahead of us, you know, our loved ones, as we call them. But I do believe for mankind to move forward, we have to allow ourselves to see all the incredible futures I have been shown. They're there for us. And one of those incredible futures I was shown, and maybe in today's world, we cannot see that at the moment, but I believe it has tried to happen a couple of times, but never succeeded. And I believe that's because humanly, the human part of us wasn't quite ready. And that's where I always say, you know, we become one nation. The whole world becomes one nation. And in that happening, even though we're, we're all different countries and all different nationalities. One thing I was shown was that that was only really on a global scale in the sense when there was something that really needed to be taken care of to help the whole of humanity and our planet. Um, all countries work together. And one thing of that future was, how can I say it? Um, I just saw, you know, there was none of what you see today. There was no homeless, homelessness. There was no body, you know, being hungry. There was nobody being thirsty. There was nobody feeling unloved, you know, everyone was educated. But the thing in that future was that we had grown that bit more spiritually. We had allowed ourselves to become so conscious of that light, our soul and our guardian angel. And it was like, we made that connection really, really strong. And we were looking and seeing differently. As I would say, in that future, you were seeing through the eyes of your soul, through that light and through your human eyes as well. You know, you were filled with wonder. There was so much for you to, to learn and to understand. There was so much, what, what would I say, that just kind of was blowing your mind, your human mind, that part of you. But it wasn't doing that to your soul, to that light. It was your soul was, in a sense, in conversation with you and telling you it has always been there. What you're seeing now, what you're feeling now, that wonder has always been there. We just didn't tap into it. But in that future as well as becoming one nation, every country, every culture kept its own, its own culture. 
And one other thing I loved was if there was ever any difficulty, you know, um, with food or anything like that, or even with water or with literally anything, every other country shared. And it was like as if, you know, it was no problem to share. And every other country shared on that global aspect, giving, and I would always say with a pure heart and expecting nothing in return, but giving in a way that whatever country needed that help, there was no shortage. So that future showed as well, how can I say this, that there was no suffering, there was no anxiety, there was no nervousness, there was no fear. Um, and I believe in mankind, in humanity. I believe we can do it. So no matter how much the other side has or is even now today trying to block us, trying to get us to go in the wrong direction, to, to make the wrong decisions, I always feel and know and pray that we can turn, you know, and suddenly make the right decision. And I know maybe that's hard for a lot of you to understand that. But even today, I still see the American Gathering Angels. I even see the, the angel of each nation. And again, that's a thing to remember that there is an angel of your nation, whatever part of the world you're in. And I know I have seen many negative futures, but the thing is I've seen a huge amount of incredible futures and they are more than the negative. And I know we're going through a negative one now, but what I would say to you, to humanity of the future, every negative future that comes along it's to help us to turn in the right direction it's in a sense spiritually to help us to wake up and the thing is how would I say this God never gave us this negative future we chose it ourselves by in a sense I suppose, not allowing ourselves to grow spiritually enough and ignoring that it's not all about material things. It's about the love you give to someone else. It's about caring and sharing. It's about being compassionate. And in this negative future that we're in, we have to remember there's loads of hope there. There is loads of light. There is loads of good things happening and lots and millions and millions of really good people helping those in need. But we all could help. We all could play our part. And sometimes your part is, what I would say for the future for our humanity is, a smile, you know, is reaching out, you know, your hand to help someone up off the ground. You know, it's so many simple things. And yes, we all think, oh, I'd have to do this enormous thing and that's too much for me. But it's not. You know, sometimes again, it's, you know, as I would say, signing a petition, um, you know, being careful about when you vote for a government, speaking up in a job, you know, just being that person that believes in you and letting your light, your soul come forward to help humanity to change. And I always remember, you know, when I wrote Angels in My Hair first, 
any interview I was doing or, or a talk, um, I would all, and this is going back 12 years, I think now, I would always say to everyone, not to forget to stand up and play your part. And I see that happening all around the world now, more so than ever. We have the young, the young woman, Greta, as a child who stood up and got the whole world in a sense to follow her, but yet not the leaders of the world and yet not enough of, you know, the business people, the multinationalists, you know, the technical companies. But we all have to play our part. And at the moment, we have a clashing of the futures. We have one very negative one, the virus. But then we have this other one, climate change. And we, as a people of the world, as one nation, all of us have to make the decisions to do the right thing for everyone, not just for ourselves personally, but for our planet. And again, I know we can do it, but yet I have to keep on pressing because I do know if we take our time, we will make life so hard for ourselves, so difficult. It would be frightening, very, very frightening at the moment with what's happening now, we we think, you know, this is frightening. But if we don't make the right decisions for climate change and work faster, each and every one of us, and allow ourselves to connect to nature spiritually and play our part in the biggest way we possibly can and ask our governments and everyone to do the same, we will only make the future a little bit harder for ourselves. Because one thing I have seen is this incredible future where we, we do it, like we save our planet. And there's no words to describe it. I could be searching for words, but how could I say it? Everything is glowing, literally everything. We are, all of nature is, even the air is, and the things that we achieve for mankind and for nature are, in a sense, at, at the moment, unbelievable to us. We can't even imagine them. I know one I have told is where the children, you know, cross the river without a bridge. That means adults cross the river without a bridge as well. You know, um, it's just so incredible and it's like we, we can do it, we can change, we can grow spiritually, we can let that light or soul come forward, we can become one nation. We can become a loving planet, if you like, a planet that progresses in a way that is unbelievable and incredible because we haven't done that yet in our lifetimes. Um, I just can't wait for that future to come, but I believe we are on the way, no matter how much darkness we see at the moment. But what we have to do is do our best to push away the darkness, push away the negativity, push away the evil and say, no, I am only going to do the right thing, the good thing. I'm going to open my heart. I'm going to allow myself to grow spiritual because I want humanity to have all the incredible futures I have seen. None of them really have been written about as yet. Because even I myself cannot find the words even to describe the glowing, the light even of this planet. And it is us human beings that grow spiritually so much that intertwining happens that we make this world 
like a little glimpse of heaven and our planet shines brighter. And of course, God has given us so much more even outside our planet, but it's not all ours. That's one thing we'll have to remember. But yes, we will travel to other planets, but the first thing we must do is grow spiritually. That intertwining must happen and we must save planet Earth. And I know humanity can do it. Um, just make yourself aware of your soul. Be more conscious. Um, call on your guardian angel. Call on God and pray. And every time you do something, think of what effect will this have on others? And what effect will it have on my beautiful planet? on earth and I know you will always do the right thing. One thing that God and the angels have, have always taught me and that is give with a pure heart and expect nothing in return. So I better leave it there for now and say thank you and love you all. God bless. <music>